Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. So it's Monday. We're back to Poetry Day. This is one of my favorite ones from Hafiz, the Persian Shakespeare, called Cast All Your Votes for Dancing. I know the voice of depression still calls to you. I know those habits that can ruin your life. They still send their invitations. But you are with the friend now, and you look so much stronger. You can stay that way and even bloom. Learn to recognize the counterfeit coins that may buy you just a moment of pleasure, but then drag you for days like a broken man behind a farting camel. Oh, keep squeezing drops of the sun from your prayers and work and music and from your companions' beautiful laughter and from the most insignificant movements of your own holy body. Now, sweet one, be wise. Cast all of your votes for dancing. They say that a bad person has no, no dance. A bad man has no dance. So guys, get out there, shake your booty. Um, from the yoga perspective, this week I want to just remind everybody, Yoga Samatha Yoga is balance. You're supposed to balance things like inside, outside, passive practice, active practice, you know, when you rest and when you are more at those kind of things. And yoga is also karma sukhasalam. Yoga is skill in action. Do everything with a certain level of integrity and focus. Bring the best to what it is that you're doing uh, in the moment, and you'll see how satisfying it is. That also has to do with the ability to attract to yourself that which you want. The law of attraction is always responding to the vibrations that you are emitting. And uh, if you focus on what is unwanted, you attract that to your life. So I call it selective sifting, selective sifting. If you want to feel good, then sift through the thoughts and only pick out the ones that make you feel good. Uh, it sounds like it's impossible to do, but like anything else, it's a practice. Turn your attention away from that which is unwanted and focus your attention on that which is wanted. See what happens. Now, um, a lot of people are always asking me, you know, uh, I haven't been to your workshops. Can you share some of the Dharma stuff that you talk about? Yes, but I call it yoga and the mystic arts. And when I talk about the mystic arts, first of all, you know, I have to say that when I first began, I was like the spiritual equivalent of a high school dropout. I didn't know anything about this stuff. I didn't care to know anything about this stuff. I was very, very material. I thought it was a bunch of crap in some ways. Underneath that, there was a part of me that still had faith and wanted to believe. I just didn't know what it was that I was really looking for. So although they say things that the mind is like a, uh, a windswept lake and you, you can't see what's being reflected around it because of the, the waves on the surface and also you can't see through the surface into the depth. So there's something about stilling the pond of the mind and that's one way that you find your true being. Uh, and it's supposed to take you beyond any images, any concepts, a transcendent insight takes you beyond anything that you would cling to, which would then be a kind of idol that, that you're worshiping. Transcendence takes you beyond idolatry. And so in one way, whatever it is that we're pursuing, we identify that as the source of all we value. And although sometimes to give you some image, although ultimately you have to leave all the images. They say it's intrinsically empty. There's nothing you can say about it that fits. It's beyond all qualities. It's naturally radiant. Somehow there's some emanation or light that extends from it and it's cease, ceaselessly responsive. It's an interactive universe. So it's always involved with us. It is us in some way. And it, through its own laws of interaction, uh, it beckons to us to like, pierced through the veil of appearance at the same time uh, just like a relationship it mirrors back to us in some way as if it's alive and talking directly to us so sit in silence and maybe you can experience as james joyce says in one of the simplest ways of understanding what samadhi or the yogic state of absorption is he calls it silent luminous stasis. I hope you find in your own life that kind of aesthetic arrest and then you can enter into the unknown 
with joy and empowerment instead of the roots of self-doubt. Subscribe to GabrielHalpern.com. Sign up for our next Good Vibrations class on the 16th called Yoga Bringing Order Out of Chaos. Have a great day.